All right, our next assignment is to take our clean cutout creature and to use various high resolution cloud references to build a cloud creature. It's called the Cloud Creature Project. And it's not that we're trying to match our creature exactly. We're supposed to make a believable cloud, first and foremost, that is suggestive of your creature. If that makes sense. So I like to add a little um, example, a little cutout of the creature as part of it so they can see that this is all intentional. Because without it, you might just see a cloud. All right, so this one's kind of in progress. And so what, what this project is really made to make you focus on is edge control. Because so far we've really concentrated on placement, on lighting, and with the shadow we just put under our creatures, we started to pay attention to edge a little bit. This one is all about edges, all about subtlety, and all about controlling color precisely. So that it all looks like a white cloud, even though it's going to have blue and pink and yellow, all from different references. So how can we do this well? We start by going back to assignment two and finding our PNG, right? Just our clean cutout. All we really need this for is the shape. So what you're going to do is open that assignment two PNG. I should organize my assignment three stuff. I'll move all of this into my assignment three folder. Right? Because now we're starting assignment four. So I've got my, you might as well save it to the desktop. I'm going to open up my assignment two PNG with Photoshop. Right. And now, I might decide I need to give it a little bit more canvas space. Depends how much space you want for your cloud. So I'm going to make mine, oh, I don't know, um, maybe 28 inches by 16 inches, just a little bit more space around it. Now, if you check your image size, it should be plenty big enough for printing, right? So what's the minimum? On the assignment sheet, 8 by 10 by 300, we're well above that. I'm 16 by 28 by 350. My creature got big. Now, I need to find cloud reference. So I go to Google Images. Just like we have on our other compositing project. And I'm going to look for clouds. Right? But I'm going to limit them to 10 megapixels or larger, just like our landscape. And I want to find clouds that are already somewhat suggestive of my creature. Right, so that's a good one. It's got the ridged back. It's kind of a long cumulus cloud, somewhat puffy. You want to pay attention to the lighting of your clouds opening them in new, new tabs. There's no shortage of clouds out there. So be willing to scroll and be selective. You don't need to worry too much about the coloring of the picture, but do worry about the direction of the lighting. And they shouldn't be black and white because we can always change the color of pixels, but if it's black and white, we have to just make it a color, and that limits the complexity of the color. I'd say you want around five cloud references. I believe that's what I asked for in the uh, assignment sheet, which is available in Canvas. And I want at least a few self-contained clouds. So I've got a lot here. I'm just going to very quickly, we should have quite a bit of practice doing this now, make a folder. I'm going to call it Cloud Reference. This will be for assignment four. And now I'm just going to view the image, make sure they're decent photos. 
They should f more than fill the screen. Don't worry about the sky color behind. We're going to be creating our own sky. So the only bad cloud reference would be if it's really, really um, noisy. Like just, it wasn't a good photograph. Sometimes it takes a while for these images to be viewed full, full resolution. That's a good sign, it just means they're really big. Now there are different types of clouds, for sure. Some of them are more uh, stringy. If you look at past student examples, you'll see some, some nice examples of how um, students have used the really kind of stretchy, stringy, wispy clouds to suggest certain forms in a believable way. But you don't want to combine like storm clouds next to poofy clouds, you know, you need it to to feel like a believable scene. And you can even have uh, clouds in the background. So in all of these searches, I'm finding PX here, this new site, which is all public domain stuff. It's giving me quite a bit. So it's, it's nice we have this new resource that I wasn't aware of before this semester. So like Pixabay, oh, that's a nice one. Now even though we're using these clouds, we're also going to be able to dodge and burn them. We're also going to clone stamp from them, smudge them. We'll be able to make them our own. And we don't want to be too literal, but with dodging and burning and stuff, we can suggest the features of our creature beyond just the silhouette of our creature. And there's my last one. Now, this one's a little overexposed. You see how there's not a lot of cloud texture in there? And it's a little pixelated, a little noisy. So some of it's gonna be better than others. So now I want you to find from all your clouds, because we don't want it to look cheesy. I'll show you what we're, we're trying not to do. If I do Google images of clouds, We don't want to make it, this is a good Valentine's Day one, you know, super, super cheesy, right? We want it to feel like those clouds are not only made of cloud stuff, but they're also floating in the air. So light's coming through them in a certain way, and their edges are not even all the way around. And so they're going to have selective edges and selective details. Right? So we're going to lose a lot of them. Some are going to pull away and soften. So it's really about edge control. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to take your cloud reference and you're going to find the, the biggest, most general cloud reference you can that you can stretch. I think this is a good one. I'm going to take kind of a big chunk from here. It's like cookie dough. I'm going to drop that into my, my opened PNG for assignment two. And I'm going to stretch it like cookie dough, rolling it out. Not cookie dough, what am I thinking of? Like a pie crust. Stretching it out. I can even warp it as long as I don't change the lighting direction. push and pull it so that it fully fills up the space. And I do say cookie dough because it's like rolling out dough for sugar cookies. We're going to do a cookie cutter out of it. So this is just my cloud texture, really broad, to get me started. To make sure my creature fits on it, I can take the opacity down. You see how my creature will cut out right from that? All right, so now how do I do that? Well, I'm going to move that cloud layer underneath my creature. Going to go to my creature layer, 
going to use the magic wand, select the empty space around my creature. We've been doing a lot of this. Way back to the cartoon jumble. Then saying, select inverse. And then turning off. This is the main assignment I use to show this technique. Turn off your creature layer and notice that your selection will move between layers. So now we move that selection of your creature shape to our cloud cookie dough and then we duplicate it. And that leaves us with a cutout of cloud. Right? Not perfect, but it gets us started. Now underneath that, we're going to make a layer. And we're going to, well, I'll do it on top just so you can see clearly. And we're going to fill this, but we're not going to do edit fill with gray or solid color, even though that would work if we wanted a gray sky. We're going to fill it with a gradient. So I did gradient right at the very end of the last assignment as an overlay, but let's really learn how to use it. it creates a gradual blend between colors. Thank you. But we want a sky gradient. So we're going to click on the gradient. We're going to go to the gradient options, which are up at the top here. You just click in this box. And we can create our own by picking the color. So I'm going to pick a dark kind of grayish blue. This can always be adjusted. And then on the white end, I'm going to pick a light grayish blue. And I can change the spectrum of the blue a little bit. But I'll get a gradient. Then I say OK. And I drag and drop. I can do it at an angle. I can do it straight top to bottom. That looks nice. Now I'm going to move that behind my, my creature. And you can decide, OK, maybe I want the gradient to go the other way, bottom to top. And maybe that works for my lighting a little bit better. I can even do a duplicate and then do another gradient and then layer them together with opacity and get what looks much more complex and more believable for a sky. So that's how we're painting in our sky. And I do want you to make your own sky. Don't composite the sky so that we're just building clouds on top of it. If I want it a little bit darker, let's add another one of these. And then let's, let's do that on a new layer. So we are painting, but we're letting the computer do all the, the hard work. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so that's my sky. I might group all those together into a sky folder. Sky group. And now I'm going to bring in cloud reference. But what do I do with this guy? I'm going to shrink him down into a corner. He's the reference for my creature. He helps the people looking at my portfolio know what I was going for. But right now, this is too sharp edged. I need more clouds. So let's do that. I go to my cloud references, and I start bringing them in. And we don't need to be so careful this time. because clouds are much more forgiving than some of the other stuff we've been using. This is a big one I want to use. And it's okay if I have to stretch it a little bit bigger, because clouds are soft anyway. And I'm going to use these in multiple ways. I just want to get them all into my Photoshop file before I finish. Stacking them all up. At least five. One more. I don't want the trees, I want the clouds. Okay. So then when we come back for the next demo, next class, I'll start, you know, cutting out from these clouds, placing them smoothing them in, adjusting their color, all of that. But right now, I'll just leave them all as smart objects and then save this, very important, as assignment four to the desktop. 
and we call this cloud creature. 